But we begin with our big story today. President Biden is back in the U.S. after his trip to Israel, addressing the nation tonight. He's going to make his argument to Americans and to Congress for billions more in aid for both Israel and Ukraine. And joining us now, Democratic Congressman from California, Sarah Jacobs. Sarah, thank you very much for being here, Congresswoman. And I want to ask you first, what do you want to hear from President Biden tonight? You know, I have been so impressed with how President Biden has handled this crisis. He is one of the most empathetic people we have in leadership, uh, and he has been around the block before on foreign policy, and so he understands how important it will be to stand with the state of Israel and make sure there is no question that the U.S. stands with them and that they have a right to defend themselves uh, and that we are strongest when we lead with our values, and he has been very clear about that, and I was so glad that while he was in Israel, he was able to make sure that the Rafa gate opened uh, and that we're going to be able to get humanitarian access into Gaza uh, to address the humanitarian situation there. And, and Congressman, I'll say my brother is in your district, so you're representing him and all of us, of course, in the Congress. And I want to ask you about this report from the Department of Defense today that the USS Kearney uh, intercepted three cruise missiles and eight drones today coming out of Yemen, fired by those anti-government Houthi militants in Yemen, headed uh, in the direction of Israel. You're on the Foreign Affairs Committee. What do you make of this? And Americans are concerned about a war spreading in the Middle East. What do you say to them? Look, one of the key priorities of President Biden and Secretary Blinken in their travels to the region was to make sure people understood that uh, this should not become a multi-front war, that there would be consequences if more countries decided to get involved. And I think that's why it's so important that we've sent U.S. naval assets to the region so that people understand that there is that deterrence there um, and why the shuttle diplomacy that both President Biden and Secretary Blinken have been doing is so important um, because it is is going to take all of us working together to make sure that this conflict stays contained and that more actors don't get involved and 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 if there are small incidences like this one like some others we've seen that there isn't a misunderstanding and miscommunication that we have ways to deconflict uh, and and not have this escalate uh, unnecessarily because congressman as you know it, it's a dangerous world out there and one that seems very much unsettled at the moment especially with the war in ukraine uh, it, it, your Republican colleagues in the House, many of them oppose continued aid to Ukraine. A lot of rank and file Republicans uh, in the country, including in your district, do. Do you think the aid to Israel will pass if it's tied to the aid to Ukraine? Look, as a, a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and a member of the Armed Services Committee, I can tell you that um, this uh, assistance package that the president's going to send to us is incredibly important. It's incredibly important for us to show leadership around the world and to show that we stand with our allies. But it's also important because this package is going to include humanitarian assistance, not only for Gaza, um, but also for other places in the world that we are seeing have uh, huge humanitarian crises in terms of food security and other issues. And and um, I think we're strongest when we show our leadership, and that's why I'm hopeful that we'll be able to eventually elect a Speaker of the House and get the House back moving so that we can pass these really necessary bills to, to continue being a leader on the world stage. Uh, and Congressman, you're, you're 34 years old, very, very young. Uh, and that's a good thing. We need that in this country, obviously, the youngest Jewish member of Congress as well. Could you talk a little bit about what you bring to your role representing all the people of your district, including my brother, uh, on this. Uh, and, and I note also that last week you were asking, put out a release saying Israel ought to, quote, reconsider the order to evacuate uh, to 1.1 uh, million people from northern Gaza. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, like many Jewish Americans, I actually have family who lives in Israel. Um, my aunt and uncle and two cousins. One of my cousins has three really young kids. Um, luckily, most of them were able to get out. Uh, one of my cousins decided to stay. Um, but I take this personally, and um, you know, it's very personal to me. And I was horrified at the inexcusable terrorist attack that we saw from Hamas. Uh, and I think it's important that Israel has a right to defend themselves. And 
happened as a young person, uh, like many in my generation, I grew up in the shadow of two protracted wars um, that were made in the heat of, you know, based on decisions that were made in the heat of the moment after a terrorist attack here in the United States. And so I think it's important that we lead with our values and that we learn some of the lessons from the past 20 years uh, and that we make sure that my, my cousin, who's around the same age that I was when September 11th happened, isn't 20 years later still dealing with the consequences of the decisions that we're making right now. Mm. Uh, and finally, Congressman, I can't let you go without asking, what is going on with the Republicans uh, in the House of Representatives? Huddling behind closed doors today, uh, some whiplash. First, it, it, it looked like there wasn't going to be a third vote for uh, Jim Jacobs to become speaker. And they, the temporary speaker, the acting speaker, Patrick Henry, would be temporarily uh, authorized to act as speaker in some ways. Now all that swung around. They're back at it. Jim Jordan's running again. What's going on? You know, I wish I could tell you um, this is a Republican civil war that they are having with themselves, and it has real national security consequences in terms of what we're able to get done. And the fact of the matter is, for weeks now, Democrats have messaged both publicly and privately that there is a bipartisan way forward, that we want to have that conversation. And I'm hopeful that eventually Republicans will see that they uh, need to take us up on that offer of a bipartisan way forward so that we can get this country moving again and we can get back to work. All right, Congressman Sarah Jacobs, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, I really appreciate your, your perspective. Hope we can talk more as, as the, this all goes on. Thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.